60 more seconds. Just pray. Open your mouth, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Build up your most holy faith. Praying in the language of the Spirit. Open your mouth and let's just press in the Spirit for a minute. Open your mouth and let's feel fantastic with what God will do tonight. Open your mouth and feel faith. Faith in the Spirit. Haruzaha Pradila Stava Telemondro Potolades. Radan Santa Pratena Combratena Musia. Mentro Maha Pretam Boscapal de la Hatom Presuli. Redindo Si, Tom Belda la Tomar, Gela Potuay Morora Hata. Yalua Mio de Bama Sambor de Mobrien Moyuta la Hatagua, Primo. Soru Zimbrun Diva Haska, Vazalido Asparata. The presence of God is mighty in this place. The Lord in the midst of His people is mighty. Here in my spirit that there are 21 people here whom God has set this day for you to experience a notable change and turn around. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. There are 21 people here. I know God will touch everybody here, but there are 21 of you here. You are going to experience a notable change and turn around in your destiny. Yeah. Your amen can be louder than that. A notable change and a turnaround. There are certain miracles that happen in your life that shift the climate of your destiny. Some miracles happen just as a result of the mercy of God. Some miracles are just for sustenance. But there are certain acts of God in the life of a man that pushes him to a new level. May you experience that kind of a miracle in this service. I said, may you experience that miracle in this service. In the name of Jesus Christ. We sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name.
one more time. For your name is praise and praise is to be praised. For your name. down i want us to lift a prayer of thanksgiving to the lord especially for those of us who were in the last miracle service how many of us were there june's miracle service were you blessed i've discovered that the key to the next miracle is gratitude for the last one can we in two minutes open our mouth and thank the lord for all he has been doing in our midst all the services all the miracle service from january super sundays down to april may and last month can you open your mouth and thank him from the depths of your heart can you thank him acknowledge him as the doer acknowledge his faithfulness even if you have not received anything before thank him tonight may just be your night we give you praise we bless you jesus and even tonight thank him for what he will do I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Thank you, Father. And Lord, tonight we thank you for what you will do in this place. We thank you because this is holy ground. And we thank you because there will be a showdown of your power, of your manifest presence, that will produce tangible and infallible proofs in the lives of your children that men will know that they serve a living God. That men will know that they serve a living God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Please, is there an Esther here? Esther. Esther. And I'm seeing someone who is kind of light skin. Esther. I need to pray for you. There's a health condition inside of your body. You need prayers. Esther. Are you Esther? Clap for Jesus. Amen. Is this your first time here? No, sir. You're, you're always here? Yes, sir. I need to pray for you. God wants to bring healing to you. Hold my hand. And your own must start before the miracle service begins. Father, let that devil in this body leave the body and come out of her. Let every disease that she may not be aware of be touched by your power right now. And let your healing stream flow. Thank you, Father. Let everything that is wrong be corrected in your body. Especially around your abdomen. In the name of Jesus.
she's healed. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Sound people, please help me work on this sound. I need it to be clear. Thank you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You don't sound like you are ready for something tonight. Hallelujah. Are we ready tonight? If you are ready, I'm ready as well. And I know that God came here because he has someone in mind. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Miracles are his specialty. Whatever he did yesterday, he can do it again. That's why he's called the Almighty. Amen. And I want you to be expectant of what God will do. Out of the many things, I don't know if there are many things that God can do or cannot do. But there are three things I know that God cannot do. Number one, God cannot lie. Number two, God cannot fail. And number three, God cannot change. If he gathered us here for a miracle service, that's because you are going to expect nothing or receive nothing short of a miracle tonight. I said you will receive nothing short of a miracle tonight. This audience is not alive. You will receive nothing short of a miracle tonight. Let's go to the word briefly and then we'll pray. I want to do a teaching. I know it's a miracle service, but the Lord laid this on my heart three weeks ago for this service because some of you, your miracle will be in this message. I pray that God will give us an understanding heart and an open ear because what you're about to receive are the secrets to experiencing miracles in your life. What you are going to receive tonight is what I would call an anatomy of a miracle. That means that if you catch the revelation in this message tonight, you can go back and with your hands perform miracles, signs and wonders. How many of you believe that? You don't sound like you believe that. If you do, shout a louder Amen. So, I want you to listen carefully and then when we are done with the sermon, we will pray and God will do mighty things in this place. Worship team, thank you for that um, ministration. The first song. The miracle of structure. That's the topic. The miracle of structure. Please just bring it down a bit. And then when it's time, you take it up. Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1. It's a popular scripture. I want us to go there. The miracle of structure. Now practically before we even read the word of God, almost every one of us here who is conversant with your Bible must have read the story of the dry bones. But I want to pick something from there that will bless us tonight. Can I make an announcement? You know, when you watch news, at the beginning of the news, they give you the headlines. The headlines may just be less than five minutes for a news that will be over an hour sometimes. Is that true? So everything I'm saying before we get into the main session today are just headlines of what will happen. First of all, there are some of you here that according to God's plan and purpose, you are behind time. I don't know whether by disobedience or by ignorance or by demonic invasion, 
certain opportunities that should have moved you happened in your life and moved you to where God wants you to be escaped you so according to God's plan you are behind time but today number one God is going to give you speed to catch up and then number two God is going to bring a restoration of those opportunities again some of you people who called you in January and would have had something to do with you this July they will call you again It don't sound like you believe what I'm telling you. The Bible says, even the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and leave. I'm speaking as a prophetic agent sent by the kingdom of heaven. Some of you, the opportunities you lost earlier this year that should have moved you to where you ought to be, they are coming back in the month of July. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ number two the miracles that will happen from this service and the experiences that will be captured in our lives will spill over to the next two months how do I know the Bible says in Leviticus 25 God spoke to them about the season of Jubilee, which was the seventh year. He said, when that year comes, I will command so much blessings to come on you, such that what will come to you, you will keep eating it even to the eighth and the ninth year. That this is the seventh month, a month of rest. I prophesy that not only will you enter into rest, but the blessings coming on your life this month will spill over to the next two months. Who am I talking to? It will spill over to the next two months. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw, I just saw promotions. Promotions. I just saw that. Promotions. Don't worry, it will happen. From, from next Sunday, you will keep hearing the testimonies back to back. Some of you don't know what rest is. Solomon said in 1st Kings chapter 5 to the king of Tyre, King Hiram, he said, For the Lord has given me rest round about, so there is neither adversity nor foe. Anything that has made your life restless, God is terminating it in this service. Whether it's in your career, in your finances, in your health, in your relationship, in your spiritual life, in your marriage, in your family, whatever has made your life restless is terminated this service. And may God cause you to enjoy true rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God cause you to enjoy true and complete rest. I'm prophesying it again for somebody. May God cause you to enjoy complete and true rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will confirm his word in our lives. In the name of Jesus. And there are some of you who came here. All you just need is for God to touch you in your spiritual life. And that's the reason why every one of us must be expectant for a miracle. You may not be sick physically. You may not even be broke financially. But this is not the best of you. And my Bible tells me that they go from strength to strength. Each one that appears before God in Zion. That means every time you come before the presence of God, there must be an upgrade. It's a must. It's part of the package. Whether you receive it or not, it's not up to God. They shall go from strength to strength. Each one. As many as we are here, God is mindful about the needs and the cases of each individual here. This is not the best of you. And so God brought you to this service to experience an upgrade by His grace. He brought you to this service to experience a revival by His Spirit. Some of you, new doors are opening spiritually for you. I'm telling you. In the things of the spirit, you are entering into another level of grace. I'm telling you. 
for some of you in this service an impartation will come on you that will give birth to your ministry as God has called you <laughs> did your amen die because you have not seen it happening yet I said there is an impartation that will come on a few persons here and your ministry will be birthed in this place I'm just giving you headlines before we get into the meeting every one of these that God has said will come to pass and the Lord will be glorified in Jesus name please be seated the miracle of structure Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit I'm just going to read two verses now but concurrently we'll be going back to read the verses down to verse 9 so please the person on the projector should help me the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out hey Forever you will be the lamb upon the throne. So to parato no zabatisi. I gladly bow my knees to worship you. Forever you will be the lamb upon the throne. Andara makoso yeske parata ma. I gladly bow my knees. Oh, to worship. I hear a cry in the spirit from somebody with the name Juliana. I hear a cry in the spirit from somebody with the name Juliana. And the Lord says he's visiting Juliana. A fresh anointing is coming on Juliana. I just heard that word, Juliana. An anointing to open up a new season is coming on her right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Chapter 37 verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold there were very many in the open valley. And indeed they were what? Very dry. Now take note of the fact that the scripture here begins by telling us clearly that what transported Ezekiel from where he was to this valley was the hand of the Lord that the hand of the Lord came upon him and carried him in the spirit just because the hand of God is on your life doesn't mean everything will be pleasant because the hand of God was upon him and you thought the hand of God will carry him to the vault of a bank where there is cash or the hand of God will carry him to a well watered garden with trees and fruits but the Bible says the hand of God carried him in the spirit of God and took him to a valley full of dry bones just because the hand of the Lord is upon your life doesn't mean every situation should be pleasant that's the reason why you don't need to pray evil a way out of your life when you are confronted with evil what you should check is if god is with me in the midst of that evil or not are you getting what i'm saying i'm talking to somebody i'm not just preaching i'm talking to somebody so god does not promise that the situations will be will be always pleasant 
There are two major parts of your life that God is concerned about. Your beginning and your end. Either it is the end of, of your destiny or the end of your expectation or the end of that season that you are going through according to the programming of God's events for your life. These are the two. It doesn't mean God is not concerned about the others. But these are the two major parts of your life that God is concerned about. When you are going through a season, the beginning and the end. And the reason is because he sees the end and speaks from the beginning. So that you can move with the word that has come from God to you with such assurance. That though your beginning was small, yet your latter end shall greatly increase. Am I talking to somebody? I feel an anointing to preach. It seems God is talking to somebody this night. He said the end of a matter is better than the beginning. So just because the hand of God is on your life, yes, I feel that anointing strong, doesn't mean that the situation will be pleasant always. The hand of God can be on your life and you are on a sick bed. The hand of God, the anointing can be strong on your life and you are broke. It's still on you. The hand of God was upon me and he carried me in the spirit and took me to where? A valley full of dry bones. But I like what the psalmist says. That's why I said, don't, it's, don't always seek to pray evil away or pray away some situations from your life. The first thing you should look for is if God is with you in the midst of that situation. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet I'll fear no evil. Why? For thou. Because as far as God is concerned, the situation does not matter. He's the unchangeable changer. If he has had enough of that situation, he can change it in a split second. Maybe that's the reason why Jesus was sleeping on the boat. In the boat, the Bible says, when there was a storm. The Bible says, but Jesus was sleeping in a hinder part of the ship. As though nothing was happening. You know why? Because as long as God is with you, whatever that situation is, Expect that it will turn out to be for your good. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and them that are the called. So it doesn't matter whether you are in an unemployed situation. It doesn't matter if you have been suffering financial depression. In fact, you have to borrow money to come to this service. It doesn't matter even if you are in debt now. It doesn't matter if the situation has overwhelmed you. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have exhausted all the spiritual options you can think of. And it remains. That still doesn't scare God. This is God we are talking about. The creator of all things, including the devil. He created the devil. The Bible says he created vessels of wrath and vessels of mercy. He said, I created for this purpose, created I, Pharaoh, that through him I will show... Sometimes God can allow you to go through the valley of the shadow of death and do nothing about the situation. Question, why? Not because he stands the risk of losing you in the midst of that situation, no. That's why God told Satan, when Satan was to go and try Job, he said you can touch everything around him, but don't touch his life. Sometimes God can allow you to go through the situation just to test how indestructible He has made you. Oh, I wish I, I spoke to somebody. The Bible says that the gospel that Christ has brought, Paul talking to Timothy, he said by that gospel we have received life and immortality. You know what immortality is? Immortality is not just living and never dying. Immortality also means indestructibility. He said, we are pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. He said, we are, we are troubled, but not perplexed. He said, we are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus, so that the life of Christ will be revealed 
That means if that situation cannot destroy you, it was there to produce another life, another glory out of your life. That men will look at you and say, can God bring a man out of this? It seems you have not been there before in life. At least even Nigeria can give a testimony one time in our history. That there was a time where our debts were wiped off. The nations who were owing called us and forgave us. If God can do that to a nation, your small life. You think about it. Especially when God wants to frustrate the devil in your life. He allows the devil to release all kinds of things at you. Everything is falling apart. But in the midst of it, your joy is preserved. Your joy is undaunted. Just so that the devil can be well frustrated enough to leave you and not come back until a long time. God, you didn't hear what I said. The Bible says of Jesus that the devil left him for a season. It's possible, though, there's that place. Throw everything at the man and he's still serving God. He's still standing. The devil will advise his demons. You see, he will waste time. Precious time attacking this one. Let's leave him and go for others before the year ends. Sometimes God allows you. His hand is upon you. But he allows you through the situation just to show the devil. The Bible says that by the manifold wisdom of God by be made known by the church to principalities and powers what kind of a species or a man is this that you throw everything at him what kills others makes him stronger so when the bible speaks of the manifestation of the sons that the creator is waiting for your mind should go wild some of you i came to tell you the reason why you have been going through what you are going through is because when god is true with you in this process of making what you have gone through and you came out standing will become the only message you will give to your generation let me tell you something about history there are men that we celebrate in history that all we celebrate about them is their stories for instance mandela nelson mandela in such a discriminatory system of appetite after all the fight and everything he ends up in prison for how many years And then from the prison, as though God has, as though he has been forgotten, he will die there. God says the first black president will come from there. That was not ordinary. That was the hand of God. God was making the statement. The hand of the Lord was upon me, yet he carried me in the spirits. Because if God had told him, go to the valley of dry bones, he would not go there. So God had to create. <laughs> Just like for some of you, you finish this miracle service, another phase of trials will open for your life. And you say, God, with all the prayers and the amen, hear this now so that it will keep you immune in the midst of that. Paul said that we, though we are poor, yet in our poverty we make many rich. And he carried me and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry dry bones that's the second thing i want us to see here first of all the hand of god was upon him just to assure you that no matter what you go through every year god's hand and his presence never leaves you the second thing is the Bible describes the bones that he saw. Not corpses, bones. That means they had died and probably gone through a process of degradation. All that was left was bones. And the Bible says they were very dry. The bones there are the remains of the catastrophic situations that had befallen God's people. Every time you go through a season of crisis, at the end of that crisis there are certain scars in your life that are the remains they are the marks of what you just went through so those dry bones were the remains only god know what happened to to the israelites whether they were killed they were massacred they were butchered or it was a plague 
the bible says they were bones the remains as though satan said i'm done with them and nothing good can come out of them some of you that dry bone or those dry bones exist in your businesses you have tried all you can the more you try to lift it it's falling apart some of you are in your third business already this year and it just fell and you are running into more losses than before some of you, you thought that this would be the year you settled down and then the last relationship that you thought would work finally broke up a few months ago or a few weeks ago for some of you in your spiritual life it's like you are rising and falling rising and falling just when you think you are beginning to ascend to a place all of a sudden it's like the gates of hell mount up against you and then you are brought right back to square one dry bones dry bones the remains what is left Nathaniel asked Philip he said can anything good come out of Nazareth is a cursed town Nazareth means tissues and thorns you know thorns chuku chuku is a cursed town is there anything good that can still come from there understand that before now there were 400 years in which God was silent God didn't speak in Israel he allowed the Roman nation to invade Israel he allowed the enemies to invade Israel and the Jews were almost losing their nation even after 400 years of divine silence at least if God will speak it should come from another place why Nazareth can anything good come not the God we serve tell your neighbor not the God we serve even if there is nothing left God can create out of nothing because nothing is something nothing is a word they were very dry some of you are here going through health conditions that you have been treating again and again and again and it keeps coming back you prayed they anointed you but it's coming back dry bones number three go to the next verse and he said to me son of man can these bones live so i answered oh lord god you know i like the king james translation he say oh god thou knowest can these bones live <laughs> every time god asks a question in your life he's not looking for an answer he's looking for partnership because the answer to every question god asks is inside the question hello hello are you with me uh, the answer to every question God asks is in the question. Can these bones live? He is the life giver. The answer is already there. Can these bones live? The Bible says in Psalm 78 that they limited God. They doubted Him. Saying, can God provide a table in the wilderness? Remember the story of Elisha and the king in 2 Kings chapter 7 when Elisha prophesied by this time tomorrow and the Bible says the officer who on whose hand the king leaned asked a question he said even if no no he shouldn't have taken it that far he should have at least said how that's enough but bringing God into an into the same sentence with impossibilities and insult to God you hear what I said? Bringing God into the same equation with impossibility is an insult to God. Because the moment God showed, shows up, impossibility becomes possible. I told you that in my dictionary there is no impossible. There is no impossible there. Impossible is I am possible. It means I am possible. That's, that's, that's what it means. So every time you tell me this cannot be done, you are in trouble though, because I will make sure we don't, we don't leave you until it works. You say if God should open the windows 
at least you should have said when God opens not if if God should open the windows of heaven and the man of God say you will see with your eyes but you will not eat may that not be somebody's portion may you not watch people go back with their testimonies and you go back the way you came you didn't say a better amen for that can these bones live verse 4 again he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them oh dry bones hear the word of the lord go on thus says the lord god to these bones surely i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live i will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that i am the lord next verse so i prophesied so i what prophesied everybody say prophesied the prophetic remains the number one mystery not a mystery again it remains the number one agency for creation as far as God's purposes on earth is concerned every time God will do something new or God will restore that which was lost he brings in the system of the prophetic the prophetic is more than a man the prophetic let me tell you something let me tell you something in my little time working in the prophetic sometimes when i hear the testimonies that are given here particularly the ones we heard today sometimes i myself am surprised today you i could not help but laugh there the prophecy is always bigger than the prophet i hope you know god just says say this and i'm foolish enough to declare it we'll think about how it will happen later but i just say it every time god will do something new every time god will bring creativity or restoration on earth he employs the system and the agency of the prophetic he says son of man prophesy to these bones prophesy to these bones why because the word of the lord in the mouth of god could not do anything to the bones but the word of the lord in the mouth of the prophet was the change the word of the lord in the mouth of the prophet was the catalyst the reason is because god is spirit and this realm is material this realm is the realm for flesh god does not have dominion on the earth god will gain dominion on the earth based on how much dominion you have god's dominion on earth is equivalent to how much dominion you have secured over your space over your sphere of influence over your territory that means if god is not lord where you are it's because you refuse to rise and dominate and he doesn't reduce god as god i hope you know he said to the intent that the manifold wisdom of god by being made known by the church not by god by the church prophesy to these bones prophesy to these bones prophesy to these bones everything was lost all that was left were the bones and the reason why the bones were remaining was because bones signify the structure of your body bones are representative of the structural and organizational framework of your body the reason why your body has a shape you know can i can i crack a joke now don't worry we are still in the spirit but you know sometimes there are some ladies and i i thank god because god created women wonderfully well i told you during the marriage relationship that i believe that women are the advanced model of god's creating human of, of human beings of god's creation of human beings so he took his time more for the woman and there are some ladies who whose reputation or satisfaction or fulfillment or joy is in the shape that they have physically and that shape is there because of the bones you have yes or no yes i wanted to say something but some of you will not forgive me so let me keep quiet 
some of you say I'm canal so let's go right on so bones represent structure framework that means order so if God was going to do a miracle there should at least be the system that will serve as the raw material for the miracle it's a prophesy to these bones why the bones first why didn't he call breath why the bones the reason is because whatever happens to the bones would determine the destiny and the future of this nation that had been destroyed of all that the devil destroyed in your life that he didn't take your peace he didn't take your joy you know why because that is the organizational framework of your entire being as long as your joy remains as long as your peace remains it will, it will keep you in a safe haven till God finishes and accomplishes all that he has designed concerning you are you hearing me at all Satan destroyed and devoured your finances destroyed your relationship but it didn't touch your spiritual life you know why that's the structure That's what represents order in your life even though the earth was destroyed the bible says at least there was something called the deep darkness was upon the face of the deep even though the earth was without form and void and everything had disappeared at least there were waters everywhere and out of water god established creation again Tonight I came to prophesy to the dry bones of your life. The dry bones of your destiny. That part of your life and your destiny that will hear the word of God. And express the creative power of God. Bringing back to restoration everything that the enemy has stolen. In the name of Jesus. Prophesy to these bones prophesy to these bones so God will not just walk miracles out of the blues God will not just do miracles out of nothing no there is a system that authorizes the creation of miracles miracles are different from magic magic is creating an illusion trying to bypass natural laws that God has placed to create an illusion to the eye that a reality has taken place meanwhile it didn't happen do you understand that magic is always spectacular that's what the devil specializes in magic is not miracle that's the reason why anything that the devil assures or guarantees or gives can be here today and gone tomorrow because it's an illusion it's a mirage But miracles are God interfering and intervening. Note the words I use. God interfering and intervening. Because if he interferes without intervening, it's not a miracle. Witchcraft too can inter interfere. I hope you know. I, I, am I communicating? Miracles are supernatural interference and divine intervention if it was just interference alone you can't accredit it as a miracle you can't attribute it to god because even witches and wizards can bend the laws of the supernatural and cause interferences in the lives of people a tumor in a person's body from nowhere is it not an interference that's why it's not just an interference alone it's an intervention and god does it by the application of higher laws spiritual laws that superimpose on natural laws so god is not bypassing the natural laws that are out playing in your life no god is bringing in a higher law every time an aeroplane must lift from the ground there is a force called lift that it must it must rise with that is the force that overcomes gravity the force of gravity that force that dictates that everything that goes up must come down to the center of the earth yet there is another force that can counter it so miracles are god 
bringing supernatural laws and superimposing them over the natural sequence of your life to the end that his purpose is established it's an interruption of the sequence of the life of an individual so that divine programming can be established And that's the reason why every miracle has a process. Magic doesn't have a process. But a miracle has a process. And God spoke to Ezekiel here. The process was how? Start by prophesying to the bones. Let's make sure there is structure and order first. Before other things can come. God, God is so specialized in order. That he knows what to fix in your life part time. He knows the first thing that should happen in your life by reason of this service. And he knows what should happen in three days time. He doesn't mix it. Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says the earth was without form and was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the surface of waters. God did not come and say let man appear. No. There had to be structure. He needed to create the habitat first before creating the inhabitants he creates the container before bringing the content that's the reason why when a man yields himself as a container as a vessel to god god can pour the content of his spirit he doesn't just pour it even on the last days he said i will pour out my spirit upon air no upon all flesh container first structure and order you need to understand it if you want to see miracles happen in your life every day. That's the reason why some things we ask God for. He doesn't do it immediately. You give God three prayer requests. God goes and starts from number three as though God is daft. No. It's because number three is the platform for number one to find expression. Otherwise, they'll say you use juju. Why will God allow you to sleep today, wake up tomorrow and there's 10 million in your account? If EFCC come, how can you verify? How can you tell? They don't believe in miracles though. You will explain in their net. That's the reason why you are crying for money. But after this service, the first thing that God will do is re make somebody remember you and that person calls you. And from that call, a partnership is established. And from that, something springs up. Every miracle has a process. Allow God to complete the process. Some of you, what you are going through now is the process of a miracle. Yes, sir. Trust me. They came to Jesus. There was no wine. Wine has been exhausted in the wedding. You think Jesus will just do like this, abracadabra, and wine will fall like rain just the way god did in the wilderness and birds began to come from the sky no jesus said fill these six stone jars six stone water pots with water and the bible didn't say jesus stone water to wine when they had obeyed the word of the lord water became wine in other words god will restore order in your life first and then what has been restored will we receive divine inspiration and power from god to reproduce according to the miracle that you so desire do you understand what i'm telling you that's why i call it the miracle of structure that's the reason why you are here you are 39 years and you're a man you are not married or you are 45 you are not married and you are just struggling with average and your cry is let me make money first and god is saying if i allow you by the time you finish making money you'll be 50 years or 60. so let me first of all bring structure and order to your life what you need now is a wife not money you know why because he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain what and that favor now becomes the channel that brings the blessings in fact there are some men that may never become millionaires until they get married i didn't call your name it's true it's not that god cannot bless you but that's a law you must follow because god knows if you become a millionaire before you get married 
your pride will intimidate that woman so marry her first and then the blessing came so that you will not be able to open your mouth and talk two of you together will say see what the Lord has done somebody say structure and order even in creation I don't have time I would have shown you how God designed everything maybe I'll do that before we close because we're about to round up now and the Bible says so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone bone to bone indeed as I looked the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over but there was no breath in them so the first miracle that happened here in this sequence in this structure in this order is the miracle produced by the Word of God the Word of God which remains God's number one agency for creation the Bible says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made when he prophesied the word of the Lord to the bones the bones came together flesh came on it that was the creative power of the Word of God that's why when God comes into your life in the new season the first thing he sends is a word and some of you are here to catch your word for this new season he sends a word the Bible says but there was no breast in them also he said to me prophesy to the breast prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus says the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe on this slain that they may live verse 10 so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came on them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army so the first thing that came to play was the Word of God that had the ability to restore everything to order any place or any life that is absent of the word of God there will always be a presence of order of chaos and disorder the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 that he opposes all things by the word of his power by the word of his mighty command the word of God brings order and structure in the life that's the reason why i believe in the miracle also i believe in the power of god but you see that after every miracle service you come back here and we keep teaching you the word you know why because the word of god is the only system that can guarantee that you are built according to pattern divine pattern a structure that fits exactly that which god has designed all things were made by him many people what they lack in their life is a sure word from god and you know what Jesus said the words I speak to you they are spirit and life that means when the Word of God comes to a man it brings life the Word of God is what gives you reason and power to live sustenance to live every day Jesus said in John 14 because I live you shall live also man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded so the amount of God's word you are exposed to per time determines the likability of your sustenance and survival. That means if God is not speaking to you, you are dying. Because his word is life. The Bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. If your life is absent, because it is possible for a man to live his entire life and be absent of the word of God. Can I prove it to you? Theologians tell us that between the book of Malachi and Matthew, which is the last book of the Old Testament and the first book of the New Testament, that there were 400 years that existed. Not 40, 400 years. And they call it the Dark Ages because it was said that God did not speak. That's why I say it's possible for a man to live his lifetime without the word. What you need is a sure word from God. When God speaks to you, you don't need to tell the word what to do. When we talk about worrying for prophecy, we are not saying that you pray so that the prophecy can be fulfilled. No, prayer does not change God. Prayer changes you.
Wait, I need to say that again for somebody who here. Prayer does not change God. Prayer does not change things. Prayer changes you so that you can change your world. The change, will, the change of things comes from a man that is changed. So when you are praying for your prophecy, you, it's not, your prayer is not going to support the word in any way. The prayer is only aligning your spirit to believe and bringing you to a position where the word of God can find expression. Because the Bible says in Luke chapter 3, and the word of the Lord came to John in the wilderness. There is a location that you must be in. There is an alignment you must achieve for the word of God over your life to be fulfilled. If that word comes in January and you don't sustain that alignment till December, then it's in December it will be fulfilled. And you will not call that delay. Are we together? Because shortly we will stand up to pray and God is going to do crazy things in this place. But some of you, this is where your real miracle is. For once you need to have the miracle of an enlightened mind a miracle of understanding to know how god operates that's why job could confidently say in a situation though he slay me yet i will praise him he said for i know that my redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at last on the earth he said though this skin is destroyed yet i know this one thing that in my flesh why was he able to believe god with beyond every reasonable doubt is because he knows the power and the effect of the word of God. Whether it is the written word, or the revealed word, or the sent word. And tonight God has sent his word into your life. To bring restoration and a turn around. And then the second thing that was introduced in this miracle was the Holy Spirit. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army the word of God created structure the Holy Spirit created life the word of God created structure and order the Holy Spirit created life let me say it again the word of God created structure the Holy Spirit created life because if the dead bodies were without breath they would have remained dead that's how a miracle happens. God will bring you to a place of conformity before he breathes on you. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. First, then he breathed into his nostrils. There was a structure. That body was a collection of systems. Different organs working together. And all they needed was life. For some of you, you need both. You need the miracle of structure and order and life. Because the disappointments are almost swallowing you into depression. Why for some of you, all you need is just life. All you came to this service to receive is a breath from His Spirit. And I tell you the truth, that breath can work wonders in the life of a man. That breath came upon dead bodies and they became an army. The Bible didn't say they were wearing, they were an army because they were wearing soldier uniforms. No. It was the energy that they exerted when they stood up. That means God fast tracked things. For you to be in an army, you have to go to training. And after series of training and examinations and tests, you must be vetted to be a soldier fit to be in the army but this is how God compresses time one breath from God comes upon a man and from a dead body he becomes a mighty warrior some of you are leaving this place with the strength of ten men ten men I'm telling you he said they stood up on their feet an exceeding great army God fast track time All that God needs to do tonight is breathe upon some of us here. All that you need to ask Him to do is for Him to breathe. You are intelligent. You have all the business idea. You are ripe for marriage. All the qualities of a woman we mentioned during the series, you already have it. But no man is coming. Sister, all you need is a breath from God. 
that breath when it leaves heaven and comes to the earth it can become a wind that will catapult your husband wherever he is and bring him to where you are you know one thing i like god god will not always allow you to go to a place and get your miracle no he always creates the miracle around the problem what's that place in psalms thou preparest a table where in the wilderness in post office where is it before me that's why you can tell if it's a miracle or not it's not a miracle when it has to take you away from where god has kept you no it will be disturbing or disaligning god's structure that he had created god will most times bring the miracle around you there I told somebody this week, I said, when you are ready to get married, your husband will be in this town. Now, please don't meet me after the service, oh, because of that testimony. The apostle is prophesying husband. No, 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 no. I stay out of that. One out of 30 people that I do that for. And there are conditions attached to that. You have to be so yielded to God. And the assignment you have to the body of Christ will not allow you to make certain choices. That's why God will choose your spouse for you. Otherwise, if God was to always show you a vision, this is, you know, that's the reason why there must be balance in the prophetic. Because if God show you, that's the reason why God was not to be held responsible. When God asked Adam, Adam said, the woman you gave me, that was wrong. Because God didn't, get, God didn't give him the woman as his wife. God brought the woman to him the way he brought other animals to Adam. It was Adam that said, this one. <laughs> so when you get married, anything you see there, they come. Don't blame God. And one of my mentors say, when you choose the wrong choice, the only thing we can pray for you is the grace for suffering. That there is a grace for suffering. It's called long suffering glory to God but that's not somebody's portion there yeah. so please don't meet me after the service and say apostle they brought I will just look at you if you bring offering I'll receive the offering with thanksgiving and tell you to go and pray say amen the miracle of structure tonight the power of God is about to come upon our lives that power is here now I feel it but when it comes, God will begin an engineering in your life. Some of you, the process may last more than today. Some of you will be under that intense weight of the presence of God for the next few days. You know why? Because the miracle is still taking place. It's still being created. It's a process. For some of you, God needs to restore order because your life is in disorder it's not where god intends it to be so many things have been mixed up and god cannot live in a disorderly environment he must return it back to the way it was and sometimes that disorder may be the breakup of a relationship are you hearing me sorry forgive me ladies I'm, i think i'm always coming to you let me face the brothers Sometimes it can be a miracle that a relationship broke up. You know why? Because if Ishmael does not go, Isaac will not come. Some of you, you have settled for Ishmael. You are already settling for it. That was the devil's option. Why settle for less when God has the best for you? Don't help God fulfill his plan. When God said, I will make you a millionaire, allow him. He knows how to do it. Just because he's not doing it in your way, doesn't mean he doesn't know how to do it. Sometimes he's doing it in his own way, so that it will not be said that a man made you who you are. Are we ready to pray? So tonight's miracle service that I welcome you to, is going to be one of a kind. It's not just a service where you will see God do different things in your life but the miracles that will happen in your life will have a pattern it will show you the finger of god you will see how god addresses things from one place after another look at what he did in creation 
Let me juxtapose creation for you with your life. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that the earth was without form and was void because the first earth God created was destroyed by a flood. I don't have time to explain. So when God came, He started a process of restoration, not creation. What did He do? The first thing He said was, Let there be light. That light represents the Word of God. That light represents God Himself. The signature of God coming into your life. So the first thing that God will do when God is bringing your life into a place of revival, when God is coming to revive you, or when God is bringing you out of chaos into greatness, He first of all will revive your spirit and it is by His word. He sends a word to you. The true light that lighted every man that comes into the world. The next day the Bible says He gathered the seas together in one side because if he had not gathered all the waters together there will be no dry land to appear so when God has brought about spiritual restoration the next thing he does he takes care of adversity around you he takes care of all the witchcraft and today today God told me this afternoon that there are some people here who are under witchcraft influence and it will be broken this night now when I say witchcraft influence you, you need to understand what I'm saying Witchcraft influence does not mean they are pressing you alone. No. Some of you, it, you have been in a season in your life where you keep making the wrong choices. And that's because you have been bent by witchcraft. Witchcraft means, witch means to bend. Satan has the ability to manipulate the mind of a man in such a way that the man will see the wrong and call it right. He will see right and call it wrong. Jesus said, be careful that your light is not darkness. I told somebody today that it's better to acknowledge you are ignorant rather than to be ignorant and you acknowledge you know something. That's what I call close circuit ignorance. Am I communicating at all? So the first thing that happens is spiritual restoration. But then after that, God needs to take care of the enemies. Otherwise, they would disturb what he's about to do. You don't plant on a weedy or a grassy land. You clear the land first. He takes care of adversity. Solomon said, there is neither adversity nor foe. He said, until God removes adversity from around him. And then after God took care of adversity in form of, because water represents adversity, I hope you know. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20. He said, though the Lord give you the, the bread of affliction and the water of adversity, Water speaks of monopoly. The waters covered the earth. Nothing good, nothing created could show up. Some of you, you have all it takes to succeed, but the enemies around you are too much. Spiritually, you are dealing with them. Physically, you are dealing with them. Even emotional enemies. Only you know there has to be a system that takes care. What some of you, what you need first is victory. Victory first. Because only a victorious man that can possess his possession. So some of you, this night will be a night of deliverance for you. And then after the waters were kept in one side, the Bible says the next thing was dry land appear. And from that dry land, everything God created came forth. So when God has restored you spiritually, and He has taken care of adversity around you, that's when your life receives the power to begin to produce. He didn't stop there. On the fourth day, He created light. Why? For direction. So now that you are productive, if you don't have wisdom from God, your productivity can drive you crazy. There are some people that have many talents, they don't know what to settle for until they are 35. That's when they discover they've not built any career. They can cook, they can bake, they can make hair, they can do this one, but they don't know what to settle for. For you, wisdom is coming this night. He say you shall hear a voice behind you that will say this is the way walk therein some of you are in between am i to apply for a job or am i to go into business this night before the end of this service direction is coming for you thank you jesus
in your seated position if you can just go ahead and pray in the spirit for two minutes while you are sitting let it strengthen the faith that has been built by what you have heard this night just pray and build faith inside of you for what god is about to do the miracle of structure the miracle of structure order and restoration order for some of us god is bringing that restoration in different aspects of our life for some of us god is bringing divine order you have been misplaced you are not where god has created your provision for some of you after this service there will have to be a translocation there will have to be a transmigration that will happen in your life because you need to be catapulted by the hand of the lord to where god wants you to be but tonight that power is here that breath of the almighty that breath of the almighty that transformed corpses to become an army is here and it's about to be breathed upon you it's about to come upon you it's about to change the order of things in your life it's about to cause a restructure Karabakasi Kabalandele, Loro Potosia, Maranda Brasa Palarosia, Jabra Talabakalia Sata. Speed of the surrender, come and make your presence known to you. The glory of the living man. That's what was revealed in Ezekiel 37. The glory of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as waters cover the sea. The glory of the living God. Spirit of the sovereign God. Come and make your presence known, breathing the glory of the living God. Ah, ah, ah. mighty presence here that presence is here that it was in the garden of Eden
begin to minister I'm just waiting on the Lord to get the order for what he wants to do just one prayer and we'll begin to minister God told me specifically of everything that he wants to do today he wants to bring restoration in our lives restoration first of divine order let things go back to the way God made them before you used to have your joy and your peace you used to experience wonderful fellowship with God. Everything was going on well till chaos came. The first thing that will be restored in your life is order. According to God's design. I just give you two minutes to cry to God and say, Lord, let the miracle of restoration happen in my life this evening. In the name of Jesus. Online, on ground, lift your voice. This may be the only prayer session you will have.
Listen to me. I'm about to minister now. Listen to me tonight. Every word that comes from this altar, I want you to receive as a prophetic word into your life. Are we together? So I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wished, not as I wanted, not based on what I saw. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Brothers and sisters, there's a high authority from heaven that is present here tonight that will back up every word released over your life believe me believe me it doesn't matter where your life is now if only you will believe what is about to come to you it is able to catapult your life from where you are to where god wants you to be come and take your place oh lord come and take your place, Lord, in my life, come and say, your place, in my life, come and say, your place. Please lift your hands. I want to prophesy on us. The first prophecy tonight as we minister but there's i don't know if this is for somebody here or online but while we're praying i just saw a family there is i will not say there is there has been a contention over a piece of property that belongs to your family and right now it seems as though it has been taken away from your family there is a property something like a land that belongs to your family and right now it seems as though the enemies or the people opposing your family has won and it it seems as if it has been taken away whoever you are you are from that family please come i want to pray for you god is about to bring about a miraculous restoration like you have never seen it's like it has been taken already right now humanly speaking there's almost nothing you who is that person there's almost nothing you can do it has been taken but i hear the lord telling me the way he restored the land and the properties that belong to the shunammite woman seven years after she left and came back god is about to bring the same restoration please lift your hands the first prophecy is the prophecy of restoration I want you to scream amen like you believe it. I declare in the name of Jesus. Listen. No, you say amen when I'm, when I'm done with the declaration. Everyone here that has lost any opportunity in time past. Opportunities that would have made you greater than who you are. And it seems as though those were opportunities of a lifetime that may not be returned back again. By the power of prophecy, we recreate those opportunities into your life now. By prophecy, we shift those opportunities back into your life now. Listen to me. There's a man here. There's a young man here. In 21 days, I don't know you, but the way I'm seeing you, you, are, you have beards. In 21 days, there's going to be a massive restoration of opportunities in your life. Yeah. 
prophecy for one is prophecy for all. As it happens for that person, let it happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Another thing that God can restore are relationships that have been lost. Relationships that should have helped you to where God wants you to be. Not just marital relationship as in life partners alone. No. But also destiny relationships. Some of you maybe by ignorance or by carelessness or by disobedience or by the attack of the enemy. People that should have helped you all of a sudden they left your life by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I decree and declare in 21 days, I call back those relationships. I call back those relationships. I call back those relationships. I declare the soul, the soul, the soul, the soul, the soul. Exodus chapter 3, he said in verse 21, I believe. He said, and it shall be that when you leave this place, you will not leave empty-handed. Anyone that has been bankrupt of resources, anyone that the enemy, the thief, has invaded and has stolen from you, stolen from your business, stolen from your purse, your finances, in the name of Jesus, let it be a sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. Hey! I'm prophesying it again because for somebody that restoration is shifting you to millions. Let that be a sevenfold restoration now. Let that be a sevenfold restoration now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody you are here, you lost to the tune of one point something million. That's what I'm saying. You lost one point something, not one million, one point something million. I don't know whether it was an investment you did and it amounted to that one point something million. I want to prophesy to that person, wherever you are, in the name that is above every other name. If I be a... Ah, if I be sent of God in 30 days may God restore everything that was lost I say it again may God restore in 30 days everything that was lost There's a lady here, and the way I'm seeing you, you are somehow light-skinned in complexion. You did some business, and you seem to be experiencing losses. In fact, there are three things you are experiencing. You are light-skinned in complexion, but you have entered into business, and it's not working. There are three things that you experience that amount to losses. Hear this before you come out. Number one, you don't make profits. Number two, every time the money comes in bulk, it's like something is scattering your finances. You don't know what to do with it. So that when it's time for you to get capital to buy another set of goods or to reinvest again, you have to even sometimes borrow. Number three, you have been suspecting. It's as though your money gets missing often. You have been suspecting that this is not ordinary, but your money gets missing. You don't know how it happens, but you have been suspecting. Because every time you gather the money to count, it's short in your hand. You are a lady, you are here, you are light skin. Somehow light skin in complexion. Where are you? I want to talk to you. God is about to cause that devil that has invaded your life. And this lady I'm seeing, you are not fat. You are kind of slim. This lady I'm seeing, where are you? You are somehow... No, it's not just you. There's another lady. There's another person. And this person is matured. Just bring it. I'll pick, I'll pick the person. Don't worry. I'm not guessing anything. Please, let's work together. Make sure you just align. You make sure everybody's here. All of you, what, what are you standing here? Land? Land cases? I'll attend to you. Don't worry. Come. You are the one I saw. Stand here.
The Lord is asking me to prophesy mercy over your life. Mercy. And in the name of Jesus, that devil that has invaded your life as a thief to destroy and to scatter, I cast that devil from your life now. The Bible says you shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble. You will not labor and somebody will eat. You will not gather and it will scatter. I declare by the message of God, restoration. Amen. Restoration. Amen. Restoration. Amen. Restoration. Amen. Restoration. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Is that true? Yes, sir. Now, one of you here, please don't be embarrassed. But one of you here, as I'm standing praying for her, I'm hearing the Lord whispering tight in my ear. It seems as though one of you has had an issue with tight. And probably that's the channel truth. That's why I said, please don't be embarrassed. But I just heard that one of you, the problem is tight. Somehow, somehow you weren't faithful in tightening, and there's something just. And that's how the enemy came. But all of you lift your hands in the name of Jesus. I cause that demon that has come to steal from you. And I command it to leave you now. And in the name of Jesus, I command restoration. Now the power of God will come on them because I'm seeing a, a spirit dark, like a shadow on one of them right now. And I see like this spirit coming through the window. And God is telling me this is a demonic, it's a high demonic case. So that money misses and if you gather you scatter father in the name of jesus let deliverance come to that one now it will happen at the count of five one two three four five i cause that spirit i cause that spirit i cause that spirit just hold on god is doing something here Where's your mother? She's at home. Adama State. She's in Adama State. Yes, sir. The reason why I'm asking for your mother is because this scattering thing with your finance is not just your finance alone. Yes, sir. Other aspects of your life. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. If it is true, you tell me it's true. If it's not true, you tell me it's not true. Okay? I'm just saying as I'm led. As, as, as I hear, that's what I'm saying. This is not just finances alone, but finance is the major aspect, all right? Yes, I'm also seeing the same thing happening around relationships. Yes, sir. Are you married? No, no, sir. But there have been disappointments. Yes, sir. There is a spirit, and this spirit is from your lineage, your mother's lineage that has invaded your life. But hold my hand again. In the name, yay! I felt the anointing now. Yeah. I cross you now. That's it. In the name of Jesus Christ, go and never return. And let there be an all-round restoration in this life, in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is it okay we pray for the sick today? If you know you are here and you, you came in with an infirmity, you are sick. All right, or you even came with a report, a medical report. Please just put your hand up wherever you are. You came in sick, put your hand very well. Put your hand very well. I need to see because God is saying I should minister personally to the sick. So, this is what will happen when I give the command, when I give the instruction, all those who are sick should come. I'm going to pray for them. Then those who are standing in for loved ones who are sick or friends, you can stand in the coin in the you know in your seat and then just lift your hands. And if you have the faith enough, you can take your phone and call them when we are about to pray and let the prayer go through the phone. Is that okay? Did we get that or should I repeat it again? Let me repeat it again. When it's time to pray for the sick, those who are here present and they are sick. You have a medical condition and you trust God to terminate it or you even came with a report please you will come out and I'm going to pray for you then while you are standing outside those who have loved ones who are not here and who need the touch of God in their health even if they are hospitalized you will stand where your seat is 
and you will lift your hands up you are standing in for them all right and if you want to call them on the phone so that the prayer can go on through the phone to them you can do that that's the instruction when it's time to pray for the sick do do we understand that do we understand that very good all of you here land cases madam please come let me talk to you i'll pray generally for all of you but i need to talk to you ma is this your first time here ma yes all sir right. this madam just look at me i just want to before praying for you all right i'm meeting you for the first time i believe this land because i see i don't know why i keep seeing your husband involved is it his land like you know two of you together or it's from your family where you come from there are two lands there are two lands there's one that is my mother's okay that is in this town there's yes. another that is mine that i bought that is in this in town. this town yes good father in the name of jesus you restored the shunammite woman's portion seven years after she had left the land and not only did you restore her lands you restored her harvest even when there was famine lord by the power and the authority of your word i declare before the end of this year let there be a turnaround and a total restoration let there be a total restoration in the name of please help her so she doesn't fall let there be a total restoration in the name of jesus christ especially the land that is like inheritance is that the one that's your mother's yes uh -huh, because that's the one i see the contention is strong on that one but in the name of jesus before the end of this year let there be a complete restoration in the name of jesus christ Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. i'm not a prophet of doom i don't hate people but madam here's what god is saying one person look at me ma one person will fall down Amen. and that will bring the restoration amen do you understand what i'm saying I understand. one person a man a manly figure mm. huge yes. will fall mm. and then everything will be restored amen before the end of this year amen in the name of jesus amen. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Okay, all of you, let me just pray for you here. If I say I want to attend to everybody, we will not have the time. So let me pray generally. But this lady, come. I seem to, there's a cry coming out from your mom. All right. Hold my hand. Let me just get something. There's a cry. When you stood there, I just saw I saw something jumping out of you to me. And this is a property. Is a land. Yes. Is a, a land. Well, is a house with don't just wait it's a house but beyond that god needs to restore your family are you hearing what i'm telling yes. you your family your siblings your parents you know your family because i see the force of the enemy coming in and trying to scatter people are you hearing what i'm telling you yes where's your family where are they i lost them you lost them all of them no Parents. Your parents, your parents are dead. Your siblings are alive. How many are you? Partially, I grew up only me, me and them. Okay, huh? It's not the sister of my mother. Uh, She's the one that raised me up. Okay. Yes. Where are your siblings now? They are all married. They are. They are all married. Yes. You know where they are, right? Yes. I see. God needs to restore. The family are you hearing me yes i just saw a wind scattering people are you hearing what i'm telling you yes i don't know the norm i don't know how many they are but i saw two, between five to six people i saw a wind just come scattering people 
and God needs to restore your family. Minus the house, God needs to restore your family. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yes. This house you are talking about, where is it? In Meiduguri. It's here in Meiduguri. Hold my hands. Father, let the inheritance be restored. Let the inheritance be restored. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And whatever it is that you have been crying for today, the Lord has heard your prayers. Amen. And let it be a new season for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for this one standing up. As they stand out before your people, before the end of this year, let them stand again to testify. Amen. That that which was long forgotten like the dry bones of Ezekiel, be restored back to their possession. In the name of Jesus Christ, be restored back to their possession. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is done. Go, you will see the hand of God. In the name of Jesus, restore, restore, restore. Let's pray for the sick now, and then after that, more miracles, and we are done for tonight. If you are here, you are sick, please could you just come? stand on the front here. I know they can't stand all on one line, so you just separate them. And if you are, the rest of us can sit down for a moment. And if you are here, you are standing here for someone who is sick, just stand on your seat. And when I begin to pray, lift your right hand. If you can, you can take your phone and call. If they are away, you can call them and let them connect. The prayer is going to come and heal them. Or God is going to come through the prayer and heal them all of these people sick is there anybody here with a report a medical report where, who is helping me pastor henry where are you please come you need to because these are medical issues that we need to verify please check and tell me what that is for your name is holy Time, let's lift it up to him. For your name is holy. Yes, sir. You have how many reports are there? Two, just one. Okay, is there any other person with a report? Please come stand here, man. Yes. Is there another person that came with a report? A medical report like a lab stand? Before we pray. I don't know, but I just... There's somebody here in this hall that God needs to heal of sugar diabetes. I just heard that. Sugar diabetes. Your glucose level is high. In fact, recently, that's what the result says diabetes kind of and the reason why God needs to heal you is because this diabetes is is um, is it's not just a random disease that came to your body but is we need to cross it is a demon is hereditary I'm saying that it has affected people in your bloodline I just heard that if you get that person please huh what diabetes huh you have okay you are on the borderline no you are not crossing over you will be healed we need to rebuke it okay uh, and then you will be healed because 
I saw something. This is a, a spirit. This is not a. It's not just. Is a spirit in the bloodline. Has he killed any? Has anybody died yes. because of it? Yes, my dad's younger. A brother. man. Yes. All right. God is going to heal you now. God is going to heal you now. And this one, you you may or may not be able to confirm. All right. But for this one, there is still somebody in your family who has the same condition. My father. Oh, you know. Oh, you know. Your yes. father too. Yes. All right. Because I'm looking at you, and God is saying, hey, no, it's more than one. Yes. This service is for your family. Did you hear what I said? Yes. I told you that the prophecy is bigger than the prophet. I just say it. It may not make sense to me. It may not make sense to you, but it will make sense to the people I'm talking to. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. God is going to heal you. And it's not only diabetes we need to rebuke. We also need to rebuke what will become like cancer in the family. Are you hearing me? You yes, may not know that one, but I'm seeing that demon also come. We need to rebuke it. God will bring an end to affliction. Amen. What's that, sir? Yes, sir. This is, uh, the diagnosis is right pyloid nephritis. That's infection. Of the kidney? The, yes, right kidney. Well, I didn't know anything there. I just knew nephritis. I know nephritis is nephron, you know, yes, the functional part of your kidney. What did you say it is? Right pyloid nephritis. Right pyloid nephritis. Ha, that name and is long. And also cystitis. Cyst only the key, yes, sir. What, what's the cystitis? What's that? It's just like, like, like inflammation of certain layers of the kidney. Okay, inflammation yes, still yes, on sir. the same kidney yes, that is yes, infected. Sir. Yes. Sir. How long, madam? Since May. When did you get this report? Um, on Friday. On Friday. You believe God will heal you? Yes, sir. That's why you came? Yes, sir. God is going to heal you and change this report. Amen. Amen. First of all, I need to prophesy to you that you will not die but live. Amen. Look at me. The reason why I'm saying that is because as I was talking to you, I saw a man like a shadow coming in front of you. And I'm seeing that you have had dreams, not only dreams, but you have had near-death attempts. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. So that's the reason why. What's your name? Mary. I know you. Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm serious. Ladies can change you. I Amen. I Check your wife before wedding day. I had a dream. Because on wedding day you might see something else. She had a dream yesterday. She, you had a dream? Yes, yes, when? Oh, yesterday. When? Last night? Last night that oh. you were praying for me. You had a dream that I was praying for yes, you. Yes, and I got healed. Let me act out the prophecy. <laughs> Something happened and now I know Madam, is this your first time? No. You've been here before? Yes. Who brought you? Who, who, who did you come with? My husband. You came with your husband. Where is he? Please let him come. I need to talk to you. God wants to restore your, your joy and your peace, first of all, before healing you. Oh, you're welcome, sir. I think I've seen this face before. Yes. This is your wife? Yes, sir. Is this her first time coming? Okay, you've, she's been here before. Yes, sir. All right. Not only will God heal you, okay, let's start. I said God is going to restore your joy yes, sir. and your peace. Yes, sir. God is going to make your joy complete. Amen. All right? Amen. Jesus said, now this is, I'm prophesying to you. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Jesus said, he that told have you not asked, ask and receive that your joy may be full. So it's not just enough to have joy, but when your prayers are answered, your joy becomes complete. So when I'm talking about God restoring your joy to capacity, it means there is a prayer God needs to answer. Yes, sir. That is beyond this sickness. Amen. That will make your joy complete. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. Because what you need is not a healing, it's a miracle. Amen. 
a miracle of correction amen in your body something needs to be corrected amen so that there can be cries in your house I don't think she understood what I meant I'm understanding you understand yes sir how many children do you have none, none. I said so that there can be cries in your house this thing is a correction in her Amen. body that needs to be done because when you people started you're not married for long yes. how long four years just four years yes, okay it's not just so when it started can i can i can i continue sir yes i want to minister to you it's okay sir. all right when this thing started when you people started trying to you understand to conceive at first you were confused because you didn't know where the problem was coming from yes sir. you were suspecting yourself at the initial stage yes. are you hearing me yes sir. you thought the problem was coming from you and then you began to feel like you were the cause yes one of you has been having dreams and the dream is a reflection of the problem this is the dream god help me this is like somebody as if you are collecting a baby or you're about to receive a baby but it is taken away from you yes, like sir. a dream you've been having that dream yes sir the problem is not you sir all right the problem is not her but god needs to do a correction in her body are you hearing me yes. and this correction will also this is um, two ways first of all i'm seeing something that is hormonal that will now affect her normal sequence as a woman do you understand what i'm talking about Amen. this is a correction god will do in your hormones that will affect your cycle as a woman I'm talking about the miracle that God is about Amen. to do. You understand that? Amen. Is that true? Two of you hold hands together. Amen. No, just one hand. Lift the two hands together. Lift, put this hand down. Lift your two hands up. not believe what I'm about to tell you but God is going to bless you with the twins yeah. all right yes it will happen some of you will remember two years ago at compassion you remember that lady the one the five brother she conceived after 10 years you're next in line sir in the name of Jesus all of you here please lift your hands God is going to touch you right now in the name of Jesus whatever the condition is God is going to heal you those of you standing in for someone if you have never seen a miracle before you will witness one by yourself in the name of Jesus God is doing a lot of healings right now madam uh, Mary hold my hand father we cause that infection now we cause that infection spirit of death let her be in the name of jesus correct every anomaly in her left kidney right now just help them if they're under the anointing correct every anomaly 
in that left kidney right now. Correct it. You are God from beginning to the end. Come, my dear. There's no place for you. How are you? Who did you come with? Who did you come with? You came with him? This is your brother? Yes, sir. Okay. Ah. Laban Sata Labakai. This young man. Huh? This may not be expected, all right? He may be seen to be somebody else. But this young man is going to be a man of God. Yes, sir. Did you hear me, sir? Do you hear me, sir? Come, come, let me talk to you. You love Jesus? God is going to use you when you grow old, okay? When you grow and you are like me, God is going to use you mightily. He's going to carry a mighty evangelistic anointing. This man. This man. There are two graces I'm seeing on him. One is the grace of Billy Graham, the grace to gather people. Number two is the grace upon Benny Hinn. He's going to be a healing minister. This one. I'm telling you. Now listen to me. I know these things. Several years ago in 2004, I was way younger than this. I was traveling from Port Harcourt back to Lagos with my mom. And we were in a bus. And you know these people who come in the bus and preach. And he was preaching salvation message and the Spirit of God caught his throat, his voice, and he began to prophesy about a young man in that vehicle who was going to be raised to be a mighty preacher. I was eating you know, when he was doing that prophecy. I didn't even know. Here it is today. It's the same way I'm prophesying to this one. All right? Tell mom and dad that they should, she's here. Yes, sir. Where is mom? Let's clap for more. Ah! <laughs> wow. I said this day is for your day is for your family. Mommy is welcome. Now I've been communicating with mommy on phone, but I've never seen her before, right? But I know you have seen my face, my picture or something. Yes. I've never seen her. <laughs> I've never seen her. We just talk on phone and you you didn't tell me of this. All the while we spoke, even the land issue. You didn't tell me anything, right? So people know this is not games. God is not only this one. Yes. The hand of God is on his life. Yes. He's going to be a mighty man. Yes, sir. And among many things God will use him to do, God is going to use him in your own place. Amen. Alright? Because God is showing me, your, is mommy still alive? She's passed away. Was she a believer when she was alive? Because yes. I'm seeing a woman who is like a prayer warrior. My older sister too. My yes, That's my and one of her desires was that God will raise men where you come from, and the gospel will be preached there. True. This is the answer to her prayer. This one. Yeah. This one. That's why he delayed to come. Just like between me and the person I'm following is six years. They had closed the chapter. They said they didn't want children again. But you couldn't stop a man of God. That's the same thing that will happen. After God healed my husband, that was when he was born. It was even a case of, um, it was just God's, God, God's intervention. Hold my hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, let healing come to this body. Amen. We curse that transgenerational spirit of diabetes. Amen. Life. Life. I want you to breathe in and out three times. One, two, now three. Life. Life. Help her. Help her. Life. I don't know if you have seen your daughter under the anointing before, but you know that she's good. Mommy, take care of this young man. He's going to do great things. He's going to be mightier than me. That's what I'm saying. Amen going to do great things that the enemy will try to attack okay the enemy will try to attack him but there's a spirit of a warrior in him there is a spirit never to give up inside of him you watch and see god bless you and god bless the family in the name of jesus christ 
Let's pray for these ones. All of you sitting down, can you stretch your hands towards them? Let's agree together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to open your mouth and command every spirit of affliction to let them go. We declare healing right now. Both to these ones and those that are connected to us here. Those that we are standing in for. We declare healing. Healing. Let the spirit of affliction go. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. young lady that one the one wearing that just look at me from there there's something that must leave your life now just look at me father i cross that spirit let her go now now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i saw something tie you are you hearing me i saw like something tie you that's why I'm telling you to leave now. Lift your hands. Father, we cross it right now. Let freedom come to the captive. Lose her and let her go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke affliction right now. Whatever the name of the infirmity is, we command life. We command life. We command healing. In the name of Jesus. Let every symptom disappear. Let healing come to the very root cause of the ailment. In their organs, in their systems, let them be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your blood be purified now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let genotypes be changed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This one is for somebody. Let sickle cell be changed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, we pray for those who are standing in for their loved ones, wherever they are, whether they can hear by way of phone or just by connecting by faith. We declare divine healing right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you because it is done. We celebrate you and we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. Say that amen like you believe it. Say the amen three times. Number one. Two. Three. It's over. It's over. Now. Now, this is what will happen. No, don't just go back. Except those ones I prayed for. You people will have to go. You will have to go and do another test all right another scan another test and then come back and let the people of god know what god has done for you okay but the rest of you some of you whatever was wrong with you you there must be symptoms all right there must be signs so i want you to check your body now if god has healed you please we'll have you just stand this way let the line just go like this anybody that god has healed so check yourself now while i just worship briefly okay check yourself if you confirm that god has healed you just stand there let's make sure the testimonies are documented and we we'll take that all right my healer you sent your word and he
Lord of this life. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. validation the result is fluctuating the result is fluctuating yes, okay god is going to stabilize your bp right now i wish we have a bp checking machine i think we have to work on that uh, we need to start getting some equipment to check some people so it can be verified these glasses do you have eye problems recently sir. recently yes, sir. you want god to heal you yes sir. i want god to heal you now Take the glasses off, please. How long? How long this gla- this eye problem? It has been long, but I started using the glass recently. Recently, but yeah. the eye problem has been how long? Like since last year. Since last year. What's the problem? Uh, to see it near obvious. You can't see it near? Yes. How do we do this now? Okay, you can't see near objects. Yes, you can only see from afar. Yes. So turn around. You can see that clock, right? Yes. And the digits there. Yes. You can see that banner there. Yes. But if I was to bring a Bible close to you with small fonts, you can't read it. Yeah, I can read it, but not always. But not always. Yes, sir. Ha. I don't understand. How, how does it affect you? It affects me because it's not always that I can read. Okay. Yes. But were you feeling it when you came here now? Yes, the condition. Sir. Yes. Because if God heals you of the eye condition, you will know that your BP has been healed. Is that okay? Yes, sir. You believe God will touch you now? Yes, sir. All right. It's going to be very quick. And then we'll check you to read. Well, give him. Let's see if you can read first. Let's just check and see. As it is night like this, can you read? Yes, sir. Your word is a lamb. Can you read it like this? I can read now. You can read now? now yes, sir. Okay, how will it be that you will not be able to read? Because we need, I need to check the condition. It used to, not always, it used to come and go. Okay, not because, always. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, it's all right. Let's just curse it now. Father, we curse it right now. Let him go. And let the devil that is distorting your blood pressure leave you now. Be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's done. And here, my, this is, madam, have you checked yourself? Okay, it's something you will need to go and check. You check and come back next week. What's the condition? I have a bedridden brother for huh? I have a bedridden brother for five years. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. 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 healed god says you are healed they said many things but god says you are healed in the name of jesus my healer 
It is raining. You came out too. What's wrong? It's my leg. Huh? My leg, sir. What's wrong with your leg? It's paining me. It's paining you? Yes, sir. How long? It's up to three years now. Two years? Three. Three years? Yes, sir. Just constant pain? No. It's, it used to occur not regularly. So it's paining you? If I sit you, for a long time. If you sit for a long yes, time? Yes, if I want to stand So now is it paining you? No, it's not paining you. Okay, it's when you sit for a long yes, time. Yes, or So when I pray for you, or stand. Yes. So which one would you want to do, sit or stand? When we finish praying, because you need to check it. I will sit, sir. Huh? I will sit. You will sit? Mm. Okay. At times, even though I, if I lie down to stand up, it's a problem. My put, touch my leg with your leg. Touch, just use, put it closely. Father, let this affliction be over. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it be over. That's the power of God. Let it be over. Amen. No more pain. Amen. It is raining all around me. I can hear it's done so you go sit down check yourself sit for long maybe at the end of the service we will now know what's wrong with you ride on Jesus so okay all of you you are still sick huh huh if God has healed you and you checked yourself join that line until we are well and we are so we the battery. It is raining. I need to pray for you. It is raining all around me. Just allow me to minister the way I want to now, or the way God is leading me. We the battery. Something big is opening. This is not all. Oh. God is not done with your family. Amen. I mean for you, not madam. You. Amen. Sir. Something big is coming. There's a phone call that will, you are traveling again. Are you hearing me? You are traveling again very soon. Amen. Were you planning a trip? No, sir. I'm telling you, you are traveling before the end of this month. Amen. There's a phone call coming. Amen. You are traveling. Amen. Huh? Now, you know, you see, the power of prophecy is that even if there was nobody to call him, just because that word has been said, it will go and call the person that must call him. Anybody that must call you for your rising and for your favor, I provoke that call in seven days. I said I provoke that call in seven days. The latter rain, ride on Jesus. Can I just touch everybody here? Until we are... No, 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 just, just sit down. Just sit down. I'll just touch you. God says I should just touch. Because there's a cloud in this place. It is raining. There's, there's a presence here. All around me. I can And prophesy to yourself the reign of God's blessings, the reign of His presence, latter rain. There's an anointing on this lady I'm touching. Father, I set that anointing to the surface. Enter into that place that God has destined for you. 
and let that which is inside of you manifest right now in the name of Jesus. It is raining all around me, all around me. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I need to tell you something. I can feel it. The light of rain. There's the spirit of revelation, of revelation is coming on you. You hear what I'm saying, my dear? The spirit of revelation is coming on you. There's something mighty that God wants to do with you. This may or may not surprise you, but there's ministry on your life. And today, under this apostolic and prophetic atmosphere of the spirit, I provoke every spiritual giftings my god i feel fire now somebody should stand by her i provoke it right now step into another realm of revelations and the lord will open your eyes to the things of the spirit in the name of jesus god wants to fix your life mother all right God wants to bring an end to certain things. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Meanwhile, I need to see you after the service because there's something I need to confirm for you. There's something you need to ask me. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, and sir. It's like a confirmation. You need confirmation on something. Okay, sir. So we can't talk that here. Oh, sir. All right? But I see God, number one, doing something around your finances. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. God is bringing restoration in your finances. Amen. And I see God also bringing restoration around relationships. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. And I see the wisdom and the grace of God coming on you so that you will not be confused again. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. So I need to see you. All right? And uh, things will not be able to talk. Are you married? No. I'll see you. But it's not a must, okay? All around me. Who is this lady? You're welcome. Is this your first time? No, sir. Can I pray for you? Did you come here with somebody? No, sir. You came alone? Yes, sir. So you don't know anybody here now? Yes. You, yes, sir. You don't know anybody here? Okay. Because if God starts saying anything, let it not be that we ask the person or something. Okay? Can I just pray for you? All right. there's a grace coming on you touching god is about to shift you Amen. all right god is taking you up Amen. are you hearing me yes sir god is taking you up Amen. there is a fire inside of you Amen. spiritually are you hearing me yes sir to do things for god and to serve god all right yes sir but aside from that i see god lifting you 
Amen. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. Even in the aspect of what to do, you understand with yes. your hands. Yes, I see God lifting you. Amen. And I see God putting a supernatural idea in your mind that will bring a breakthrough. Amen. I hear what I'm telling you. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, hold my hand. Father, let that grace rest upon him and multiply. In the name of Jesus. And this fire that is inside of your spirit will increase. Amen. And it will never die. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Testimonies, let's hear. So we can be done. Okay, sir, this is Sister Yaga Nasani. Yes. Healed of chest pain. Chest pain. How long? Yes, sir. Just today. It started today. Started today and ended today. Yes, sir. Any problem that started in your life today is ending today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is Sister Charity Samson. Healed yes. of ulcer. Ulcer. How long? Yes, pain since 2016. My God. 2016. Yes, sir. That's how many years? That's. Six, six years. Six years. Yes, Can we celebrate God for that? You've been having pains. Yes, sir. For six years. Yes, sir. And now you are healed. Yes, sir. For the first time. No, it comes and goes. It will come and go. Yes, sir. But God has healed you now. Yes, sir. Go and eat all the food you have been running from. Amen. In the name of Jesus, it is perfected. Yes. Amen. Yes. Next. Hallelujah. This yes. is Sister Ruth Mamza. She's healed of eye, more like cataract, for over three weeks. She's healed of eye condition. Cataract? Yes, sir. For three weeks. And you're fine now. Yeah, I can see your eyes from here. They are almost red. And God has healed you. Give Jesus praise, somebody. It's perfected. Come, my dear, come. I know I'm going to your church in, a, in two months from now, but there's a grace I want to give to you. They know you to be a singer, but I want to release a healing grace inside of you. Alright? So people will be healed when you sing and when you lay hands on them. Father, release it upon her right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Go and do signs. Heal the sick. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. It is yours. God bless you. It is yours. Go and exercise it. Can we give God praise? Yes. Amen. This is Sister Hawa Sunday. Yes. She came in with a chest pain, but she's healed right now. This pain lasts over two months. Two months. Yes, chest sir. pain, and you yes, are healed. Sir. The power of God came on her. I didn't even touch her. And it's gone forever. Come, my dear, let's perfect it. Can we give Jesus praise? Two months. Yes, whenever I pray in tongues, then I'll be feeling chest pain. It's as whenever as you pray in tongues, you'll be feeling chest pain. Yes. That devil is a liar. It's as if someone has put a heavy load on my Like body. there's a heavy load. Yes. Then what happened when you were standing here? I fell down and I received the Holy Spirit. How did you fall down? Don't you don't know. <laughs> it's all right. Now you're healed. Yes. All right. So we're going to perfect that healing now. And the healing anointing will come on you so that God can heal others. Now, Father, don't worry. You will feel like something. Just lift your hands. You will feel like something coming on you. And like you want to sleep. In the name of Jesus. It's done forever. Go and heal others. God bless you. Yes, sir. Give, God, give Jesus praise, please. Yes. Sister Jasmine John healed of stomach ulcer that lasts for over two months. Two months stomach ulcer. God healed you. Is done. Come and shake my hand. Clap and give Jesus the praise. Perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Never to return. Yes. Hallelujah. Ananiah. This is Brother Hanani Abulus. Healed of leg pain. Before the service started, he had a little minor accident and he, he was you healed. You had a minor because... accident? Yes, sir. And you are healed now. Which yes, leg? Sir. That leg. Raise it up. Let's see. No pain. Give God praise. That lady, that lady, yes, with, with attach like this. Yes, you're looking at me. Please come. She has just been looking at me all through the service. I've been noticing her. I know all of you where, where you are looking at. Amen. Just I just saw her eyes fixed 
All right. Okay. How are you? Deborah, right? Okay. And come. Let me give you an anointing by the Holy Spirit. Father, let something come on her today that will change her life for the better. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. God is going to use you as a vessel in answer to your cry. Are you hearing me? In answer to your cry, He's going to use you as a vessel. Not the way you have asked, more than the way you have asked. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. One more. Uh, this is Sister Rahila Balami, healed of ulcer and calcium ulcer. for God. over three years. Oh, God is healing people of ulcer. Can we clap them to the Lord for this? And when you see God healing a particular sickness is a sign and so she's supposed to return to the hospital tomorrow you are supposed to go back to the hospital I had a sleepless night on Friday okay yes, sir. well you can go and give the doctor a high five if you want to go but you are healed God bless you perfected in Jesus name yes Amen. so this is Hawa Mohammed she's healed of lower abdominal pain and severe headache that lasts for over four days okay yes sir four days yes, sir. lower back pain abdominal sorry what was it again lower abdominal pain lower abdominal pain yes sir and what again and severe headache headache yes, sir. severe headache can yes, we sir. give jesus praise come i wasn't listening because god was trying to talk to me about you. what do you do now what are you doing i'm working in post office in one office like that no, God is lifting you. Amen. Alright? Because yes, this salary is not even big. Yes, sir. God is lifting you. I don't want to call it on the mic. Yes, sir. But it's, it's really nothing. Amen. Sir. But you are just Amen. there to manage time. Yes, sir. But the hand of God is repositioning you. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Between now and first week of September, there is a miracle job coming to you. Amen. Amen, sir. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. It is done and perfected. That's why I wasn't listening to the testimony. God bless you. Next. Yes, sir. This is Sister Jamila Ali. Yes. She came in fine, but at the cost of the service, she was attacked by severe headache. Ah. As soon as we pray, she received her healing. Can we give Jesus praise? Any devil that wants to attack you in the house of God is cast out of your life in the name of Jesus. And you're fine. God bless you. Yes. Yes, sir. This is Sister Arziki Elijah. Same case. She came in fine, but at the cost of the service, she was attacked by severe headache with news there. But as soon as you prayed, she received her healing. God bless. Bless the Lord and give him praise. God bless you. He's done. You're healed. There's somebody, I'm seeing a problem. I'm seeing somebody with a crutch. All right, it's not here. It's connected to you. Here, God is healing that person. A problem with a crutch. Yes, you, but not just you. I'm seeing what I'm seeing is one crutch, not a complete crutch. You know those crutches that are not complete, not the one that is up to this place. That I just saw. Is that you, sir? One. Who is the person? Huh? Your sister, yes, sir. Using one crutch. What's wrong with her? They have an accident, and immediately the leg has been amputated. The leg, yes, sir. has been amputated during the accident. During the accident, yes, sir. You have to believe God for a creative miracle, yes, sir. Where is this sister? She's in just now for her medical checkup. For her medical checkup. Since 2020 up to now, she still have an issue with the leg. She's having issue with that leg. Yes. But God is healing her. Amen. The miracle that could not be corrected yes, sir. by surgery. Yes, sir. God is going to correct it supernaturally. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. Where did they operate on her? Since 2020. They operated on her. Yes, sir. That's why I said the miracle that could not be done by surgery. God will do it supernaturally. Amen. And you too, sir. Yes, sir. One crutch. Yes, sir. Because that's what I saw. Yes, sir. God is healing that person. All right, go back home and confirm. The hand of God will come on that person this week. Amen. And there's going to be a testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Can we stand so that we get ready to close? I appreciate your patience tonight. Amen. 
I told you that you will not walk out of this place the same you came. Isn't it? I told you that God is going to bring a miracle of restoration in our lives. Now I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. To every hand lifted. Anything that is missing in your life. May God complete it in the name of Jesus. Everything that was stolen, may God restore. She's healed? Yes, sir. Of what? Uh, side back pain. She came in fine by the cost of the side. Side to the back pain. Yes. And now it's gone. Yes, sir. You are very sure. If they, if they want to like put music for me, I want to dance, please. I want to dance. <laughs> oh yeah, let's let's put music for her so that we can dance now. Everybody will dance for two minutes. Alpha, oh yeah, come. Just two minutes. Hallelujah. Now, Amen. Dance. Celebrate your miracle in advance. Just two minutes. Hey, hey. Are you ready? Everybody, look, 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 see what the Lord has done for me. Everybody, come on now, let's go. Fire. Everybody, look, 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 see what the Lord has done for me. You have to dance. The miracle has happened already. Listen, praise, listen. Praise is powerful. When you were dancing, I mean Sada to you, yes. When you were dancing. I saw a good news coming to your family this morning. Listen, I know your sister, I know your sister just put to bed, but there is a good news coming to your family again this morning. This one now is deliverance. There's somebody here, you have been experiencing a kind of oppression. As if they come to press you in the night or in the dream or something like that. I want to pray the hand of God is coming upon you for deliverance. Lift your hands everybody. Father anyone that is under any spell of witchcraft, demonic manipulation, demonic oppression, strangers in the night coming to oppress your people. He said the, the strangers shall hear my voice and obey. Right now I speak as an oracle of God. I command those spirits to live those lives now. I break the power of witchcraft now. I cause that oppression now. It's delivered in the name of Jesus. They come to press you in the night, wherever you are, the hand of God comes upon you for deliverance now. I'm saying it again. The hand of God comes upon you for deliverance now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for every life here as we round up. Anyone that came trusting you for a miracle, is that joy, Madam Joy? Come, God, God is recorrecting something around your hips. Are you hearing me? So that there will be no constant pain. All right, yes, and a time will come where they will have to say they want to operate. Yes, I see God doing a miracle around your hips. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Huh? I've been experiencing. You've been some experiencing pain. some pains. Yes. When you were coming back into the hall, I saw a red line in the spirit on that place, and God said I should prophesy. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray that everyone that has come here today lives with a miracle. Yes. In their finances, they will expect and receive a miracle. In their, in their finances, they will see a miracle. Miracles in their marriages, in their careers, in their businesses, in all that concerns them. Particularly miracles in their spiritual life. Every long lost fire, every long lost grace in your life, I declare, let it be restored now. Let it be restored now. In the name of Jesus Christ, put your hands together and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Now before we go, I want to make an altar call. I appreciate you for the time. You know, we've spent all the time and we thank God because it was worth spending. But please, no movement everywhere. Just ushers mount everywhere. I want to make an altar call. With all that we have experienced and we've heard tonight, there has to be one person who needs to know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. Everybody standing, if you are here and you've not given your life to the Lord, you are not born again, you know deep within you, or possibly you are here, you are not sure if you are saved, you don't have the assurance, it will be good to come out as well. There's something called the assurance of salvation. But if you are also here and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, maybe you messed up or several, several things happened and your work with God is not the way it used to be. God wants to restore you. If you are among any of these three categories, I'm going to give you just a few seconds to lift your right hand where you are so that I can pray for you. There must be one soul here present tonight that must return to the Lord. There must be one person at least that must rededicate his or her life to the Lord and allow the Lord to restore you, restore your first love, restore your joy, restore your peace. If you are here, I want you to unashamedly lift your right hand and let's just bring you back to the Lord tonight. This will be the greatest miracle that you will have tonight. Can we celebrate God for that hand lifted? If you are joining her, please lift your hands. If you are here and you know you need to say yes to the Lord Jesus or you want to return back to the Lord, you want to rededicate your life or you are not sure if you are saved, if the Lord Jesus should come today, there's something called an assurance. Please just raise your right hand where you are and your right hand is raised. Please come to the front. I want to pray for you. Can we celebrate God for them as they come? Please, if you are coming, come quickly. If you are thinking about it, join them in front. If you are thinking about it, it means you have to be in front. Apostle, I'm not too sure. Come and receive the assurance. While I pray for them, if you are joining them, please make sure you do it very quick. Because after the last amen, if you are not here, you were not saved. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be safe. Those of you in the congregation, stretch your hands towards them. If you are joining them, please join them now. Before we finish the prayer. If those of you in front, just repeat after me this prayer. And I want you to believe it with the depth of your heart. Something new is going to begin for you today. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. I thank you. Because I believe that you died and rose again that I'll be saved I receive eternal life 
and I declare that I'm born again forward ever with you backward never in Jesus name father I pray in the name of Jesus that you seal them by your spirit and from today they receive the gift of eternal life in their spirit man I declare by the authority of the Word of God that they are born again and I declare victory over sin help him victory over Satan victory over all the chaoses in this life they will grow with a burning